dazu. Everyone's talking about at the moment is the laptop and electronic device ban. It's a cold and rainy day in London, which, to be fair, is no surprise. Please use the handrails as the steps may be wet and slippery. I'm just coming back from the doctors, having got my medical, which means that I can fly aircraft again because my medical elapsed while I was travelling. And speaking of aircraft, the big thing that everyone's talking about at the moment is the laptop and electronic device ban. Now, what that means is that if you're traveling to the US and also to the UK from uh, quite a few locations in the Middle East, then you're not allowed to bring your laptop or electronic device, including tablets and oversized phones. I mean, I'm not sure who decides what's oversized or not, but it means that you're have to gonna, you're gonna have to check it in and you can't carry it with you on board the plane. Now, this is quite a big problem because quite often stuff goes missing from checked in baggage or it gets damaged. And a lot of people need their laptops to do their work. People, IT professionals, people such as traveling musicians, this is going to be a big problem for them because if their laptops go missing or their electronic equipment goes missing, they're not going to get paid at the other end because they can't do their jobs. So I think this is going to mean for uh, companies like Etihad and Emirates that a lot of people are probably going to stop flying with them because they use Dubai and Abu Dhabi as their hub and as a result you won't be able to take your laptop on board with you. What it also means is that uh, flying becomes an even more irritating and sucky experience. And let's face it, flying is not fun at the best of times unless you're at the pointy end working the controls. So the fact that it's going to be at least seven months before the US authorities re review this uh, new law means that I think it could be here to stay. And my worry is that it's going to expand to uh, more and more places around the world, which effectively means that you're not going to be able to take your uh, tablet, you're not going to be able to take your laptop with you on board the plane, which means you're stuck with the in-flight entertainment and also means that you're not going to be able to do work on the aircraft. And to make matters worse, if your laptop or other electronic device is stolen from your checked-in baggage, it's probably not going to be covered by your insurance. I've just got home and the news of the terrorist attack on the Palace of Westminster or the Houses of Parliament has uh, been all over the news and this is an absolutely tragic event and it's awful, awful thing and my heart goes out to anyone that's been affected by this directly or indirectly, uh, in particular the people that were injured, the families of the people that were injured and the policeman who was sadly killed in the line of duty protecting the Houses of Parliament. Now this obviously is a terrible, terrible thing to happen and nothing that I can say is going to change the fact that this is an awful thing. It's important that people don't become scared, continue about their daily lives as they would normally because these sick individuals who carry out these atrocities want to cause fear, they want to affect our daily lives and if we let them do that they win. So I think it's really important to just carry on with what you're doing. Don't let these people get to you. And, and keep in mind that crossing the road, going by car, going by bus, 
is a lot more dangerous statistically. You're much, much more likely to get killed by a bee sting, hit by lightning, you know, all of these incredibly rare events than you are to be killed in a terrorist incident. And while this is terrible and obviously it's very shocking and it's, it's natural to be nervous about you know, crazy people wanting to inflict harm upon you when you're just going about your daily lives. Don't let them win.